I, I just want to begin by pointing out an irony that's very disturbing to me, which is that the 14th Amendment, which the radical Republicans drafted, was designed to overrule Dred Scott and bring formally bonded black Americans into full citizenship with new rights that whites were bound to respect. That is not a colorblind, a colorblind project. And it is deeply offensive to me that this uh, amendment, which introduced the concept of racial equality into the US Constitution for the very first time in US history, is being interpreted in a way that is most harmful to the equality aspirations of black Americans. Um, so I just want to say that. It's, it's really offensive. Um, now, um, having said that, here are some possibilities. I've, I've spent a, a lot of time thinking about this. First principle is to remind uh, selective institutions. Affirmative action really most matters at selective institutions. Um, uh, that the K to 12 pipeline is savagely separate and unequal, and they have no business reifying existing advantage. And I, I call on them to step back and, and, and think about reforming the entire process in a way that scrubs the entire admission process of practices and criteria that actually reify advantage and aren't truly predictive of, of student success. So that's the first thing, right? So, um, but my, my place, okay? Uh, it is the case that some of the innovations developed as a result of lawsuits that stopped um, the use of race or, or, or um, legislation or ballot initiatives that stopped the use of race. A couple of states, particularly Texas, adopted top percentage plans. It's now the top six percentage plans. And um, it's fair. I think all public universities and, and states should be thinking about this, lobbying for it. It's fair that taxpayers across the state that subsidize these flagship public institutions, um, that all high achieving students in a state should be judged against the resources that were available to them. And that's what percentage plans do. They're not, they, they're not a panacea, but it certainly helps. It brings a lot of, of uh, racial and economic diversity because so many states are, are, are segregated. Now, um, SAT and ACT should be optional. Standardized tests should be optional or not used at all. I prefer optional because that gives maximum agency to the student. But the thing that standardized tests are most predictive of is the wealth of the parents. Um, it doesn't, pred it predicts almost nothing about long-term performance and it's actually, there's almost an inverse relationship between how high a test score is and the, pr the likelihood that that person's gonna give back to society. We say universities, most of their mission statements say they're trying to develop future leaders who are gonna give back. Well, a test score is actually not predictive of that at all. Alternative plus factors. I'm a huge fan of giving a bonus to people who have had to overcome exposure to poverty either in their neighborhood or their school. There's so much research out there. There's so many, I, 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 um, it's already there. You can look at Raj Chetty's work. Um, every zip code in America has been profiled into whether it's high opportunity, medium opportunity, or low opportunity. Um, we need to recognize that overcoming poverty or structural disadvantage, um, which Latino and black students are much more likely than white and Asian students to be relegated to a school with quite a few poor kids and much less resources than those kids need, right? Overcoming that is itself a form of merit, right? Um, uh, okay. Scrap legacy preferences. Uh, I believe that Ketanji Brown Jackson's, um, um, the, the, the hypo, uh, the, uh, to within the extent um, um, permissible by law, universities should invite students 
to talk about in their essays what they have had to overcome, and if it's race or systemic racism, or you know, or if they have a legacy um, of, of of coming out of slavery, and, and that's a source of pride uh, in terms of what their families have overcome. It's part of their culture. They should be able, within the First Amendment, to discuss that. Um, and 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 I'll stop there with it. But a couple of other things I'll. I'll just tick off really, really quickly. Outreach partnerships, selective universities by now, most of them have a partnership with a QuestBridge or a Posse. There are organizations that are out there that are very good at doing research, finding historically underrepresented kids who can do the work at very selective places. Um, dramatic in innovation and outreach. Uh, a source told me that for the first time this recruiting season coming up, Harvard University is partnering with Howard University where they're going on the road together in doing their outreach, right? That's some smart innovation there. I think you should scrap merit aid and return to making financial aid 100% need blind. What does merit aid do? It's a cynical thing where they compete for the most advantaged of needy students. Right, I think, and there's some systemic disadvantage there. I think universities should ditch their relationship with US News and World Report. Follow the lead of Columbia <laughs> and several other, um, you know, higher education. Just stop participating, stop giving the data, take some pressure off yourself around protecting your precious rankings. Um, uh, expand the class size. Expand the class size, add more seats if you can do it to create more opportunity for more people. Uh, take in more transfer students. I was looking at the numbers last night. UC Berkeley so entering class uh, from last year had 3.4% black students. It's entering transfer students is 5%, right? You can be more innovative with trans, but go recruit at community colleges. Students at community colleges that have gotten straight A's, you know, um, uh, some, of, some of these really elite places, Amherst is one, have started figuring this out, you know? These are great students who have overcome a lot, done the best that they have, and they can perform, and they do. Um, and, you know, the, all of this, the bottom line message is go forth and break things and innovate, <laughs> you know, take advantage of what's the, there's that saying about, you know, any, every crisis is an opportunity. So these are some ideas.